Hello, welcome to this segment on evaluating candidate design concepts. This is one aspect of design evaluation. First, I want to point out that although this segment is coming after we've already started talking about detailed design and prototyping, we would typically do at least one iteration of this concept level uh, evaluation after ideating our candidate concepts, but before proceeding on to further development of any chosen concept. That's because this step helps us in making the choice about which of our candidate concepts should in fact proceed on to detailed design and prototyping. And sort of analogous to something we said earlier regarding establishing our design requirements, this is a step where the particular degree of time and effort we put into it will depend somewhat on the stakes. In other words, the more cost or time involved with committing to proceeding with a particular candidate, the more critical it is to invest in this step of evalu evaluating your choices at the concept level. On the other hand, if a given concept would be quick and cheap to prototype, or would be amenable to prototyping virtually to some extent, such as with simulation, you may have the luxury of not needing to be as rigorous on this step. So yet another judgment call. Okay, so at this point in our process, we've already ideated to the point of having some reasonable candidate solutions, at least on a general level. So now, how do we evaluate these candidates? Well, a common approach is to use a kind of decision matrix called a pew matrix or pew chart. This generally rates each option, and in this case, each option would be one of your design candidates, with a plus, a minus, or an S for each criterion. And in this case, the criteria are the design objectives that we developed back when we did our requirements phase. So an S rating, which sometimes uses a zero instead, indicates what you might think of as an average or baseline level rating uh, for a given option for a respective criterion. Sometimes that baseline is based on a comparison to a competing product uh, or perhaps to your own existing or incumbent design. Anyway, a plus sign or plus one, uh, it, this indicates something that's viewed as somehow significantly better or above that average or baseline. Uh, and again, this is just based on your best estimate at this stage. There are a lot of different factors that can come into play as to uh, whether you deem something to be uh, essentially average or baseline or significantly above. And conversely, a minus sign or minus one indicates something viewed to be significantly worse or lower uh, than whatever you deem baseline to be. Also, it really works best if the same person or team assigns all the ratings throughout the process, or at least throughout a particular iteration of this step of the process. Uh, this just helps keep your comparison as apples to apples as possible. After assigning ratings for each candidate concept against each criterion, you then tally the criteria specific scores for each candidate. This is where a plus sign counts as plus one, a minus sign counts as minus one, and an S counts as zero. If one candidate emerges substantially ahead of the rest, this can be a strong factor to consider in making your ultimate decision. On the other hand, closer results should be given less weight in your overall decision because, as we'll stress again in a bit, this is a tool that does not capture every nuance that could potentially be relevant to your ultimate choice of which candidate should proceed, at least at this stage in this overall iteration of your cycle. Generally, you would treat each of your 
top level design objectives, such as from your objectives tree, as a criterion in an initial pew matrix. Then if it would be helpful, uh, you could do a more specific pew matrix for sub objectives under a particular objective. Uh, and sometimes that is even useful to do in a given iteration of this uh, concept evaluation phase uh, before deciding um, which overall candidate to go with. But again, that's a case by case decision. So let's think about an example with a fairly simple situation. Suppose we're designing a new air fan. High level objectives might include, for example, safe, portable, and quiet. We could rate these alongside each other in a pew decision matrix. Sometimes each criterion itself is weighted by importance, typically with an integer rating from one to three, uh, ranging from one to three, sometimes one to five. After all, when we discussed design requirements, we did indicate that not all of our objectives will be equally important. Similarly, some decision matrices also use more granular scoring of the candidates. For example, a scale ranging one to five or one to 10, instead of just that plus or minus scoring that I mentioned. In those cases, the tallies would be based on summing the products of unweighted scores and corresponding criteria weights. Now, I'm not actually covering weighted sum decision matrices in this segment. I just wanted to point out that they are quite common. There's both pros and cons with either the weighted sum approach or a non-numerical approach. Uh, I'll just note as an aside that uh, Stuart Pugh, the creator of his namesake tool, warned about the alluring yet potentially problematic practice of quantifying the weights and scores. He actually favored simply assigning and tallying the pluses and minuses and S or zero ratings, citing the fact that engineers might be tempted to put undue emphasis on this tool if it uses numbers because that can create the illusion that it's more objective than it really is. In any case, whichever kind of pew matrix you use, it will not make the decision for you. It merely helps organize your own analysis in preparation for exercising your best judgment. Now, for sure, breaking down a judgment using analytical tools like this can help make the process more transparent. It can help you organize your thoughts. And these are very helpful things, but that's not quite the same as making it objective overall. So while a decision uh, analysis method like this can be useful, uh, these are really just a factor to consider in what must ultimately be a determination by judgment. Of course, intuition has its shortcomings as well, um, hence the value in giving at least some consideration to these more structured decision analysis techniques. There is a tricky balance, or perhaps paradox, in using these tools on the one hand to help check ourselves from a potentially irrational bias for or against a given solution, uh, while at the same time reserving the right to make a final decision that may differ from the result of any formal decision-making method. But the fact is, there's any number of reasons why a given matrix or other decision-making tool might not end up fully capturing or reflecting all of the relevant considerations. In any case, we always want to have as accurate of an understanding as possible as to our reasons for which candidate concept uh, we, we uh, select to proceed on to detailed design and prototyping. So if you ultimately decide that you simply disagree with the results of your pew matrix, for example, uh, and you're gonna go another way, that can be valid, but be open about that fact and do your best to document an explanation as to why. Sometimes a hybrid design candidate comes to mind during concept evaluation. This is where you think of a new potential uh, solution approach that uh, aims to combine the strengths of two or more different candidates to make yet a better one. This can be valid, uh, but ideally it should first be taken back through at least a brief round of ideation 
uh, perhaps going back to your morph chart, to develop it to a similar level um, that you've developed your other candidate concepts, and then take it back, go through a, another round of concept level evaluation, um, where you compare it with the other still viable candidates that are in the mix. Now, that will, um, of course, depend on the stakes and other factors specific to your situation. Uh, but generally, it is considered the more sound practice in that situation uh, to go back, at least for a brief re reiteration at the ideation stage, uh, to flesh out the candidate to, to, to a comparable level as the other candidates, and then go back and reiterate at the concept evaluation stage. Okay, in our next lesson, we're going to start talking about other aspects of design evaluation, uh, namely the ones that come into play further along in your process, like after you've selected a candidate concept and begun developing it further. See you then.